Welcome to the Attention Deficit Disorder Expert Podcast Series by Attitude Magazine. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Susan Coffin here today for Attitude Magazine's ADHD Experts Broadcast. We've got a great topic today, one that's gone very unaddressed, and that is the special parenting needs and strategies of fathers with ADHD. And uh, a terrific expert speaker today in Dr. Terry Dixon, who is going to be offering five ways to be a better dad. There are almost 4.5 million American fathers who have been diagnosed with ADHD, and many more are living with undiagnosed symptoms, distractibility, disorganization, and poor anger management. So you add to that a general lack of support for dads across the board, and you've got a generation of fathers who really could use some special strategies Dr. Dixon will be talking about topics such as why men with ADHD are prone to angry outbursts and how they can keep from unleashing that rage, how feelings of guilt, shame, and worthlessness can build up and can harm family life, strategies for accepting the idiosyncrasies and traits and gifts of of your ADHD children, and how ADHD treatment and coaching can improve your marriage and or your relationship with your kids. Dr. Terry Dixon is an MD, a certified coach, and the founder and director of the Behavioral Medicine Clinic of Northwest Michigan, which is a clinic that served families with ADHD for over 15 years. He's a a well-known expert in the field, has been the principal investigator for several clinical trials, published many articles um, on ADHD and related topics. He was led to coaching by his passion for families. He feels it fills a need that uh, medication cannot fill. Um, He speaks regularly on the topic, has been interviewed locally, nationally, on the web, on um, Chad, and most recently on an NBC Nightly News special on adult ADHD. So do write down his website, youradhdfamily.com, as an important resource for listeners. So with that, let me thank Dr. Dixon again and turn the screen over to him. Well, thank you, Susan. It's a pleasure to be here. So today I'm going to talk about my experience as being a dad with ADHD. I was not diagnosed until I was an adult. So, and that was after we, uh, my wife and I have two children and they both have ADHD. And it wasn't until after they were born that I was diagnosed. So I made a few mistakes in the beginning, particularly with our first child. So Today, I want to talk to you about five things that helped me along the way to be a better dad with ADHD. So the first thing is taking care of yourself first. This is really first and foremost. And the the first thing you need to do is to get the right diagnosis. And I would highly recommend that you go to a practitioner who is well-versed in ADHD someone who has a lot of experience with ADHD and has screened a lot of people. And if you, um, if you walk into a doctor's office and you give them a list of symptoms and there's no screening involved, because you really, to have the right, right diagnosis, you should meet the DSM-5 criteria because it is a psychiatric diagnosis for ADHD. If you just give a list of symptoms and the guy says, okay, here's your script, Um, you probably didn't go to the right person. So I would really highly recommend that you um, first get the right diagnosis from someone who is really versed in ADHD. And there are different treatment modalities for ADHD. Um, uh, Learning skills, different strategies are very important. Um, Organizing your life and, and you can learn a lot of those skills. Those are skills that I needed to learn but perhaps you may need medication. So again, I would go to a person who is well-versed in medications for ADHD and does not just dabble in in, in it. I I get too many people, uh, I have have two hats. I'm an ADHD coach and I also, as an MD, I have an ADHD clinic for children and adults. And far too often I, I find that people come to me frustrated because they were either given the wrong medication or the wrong dose, or they were on uh, a dose that just didn't work for a long time, and the other doctor practitioner would not change the dose. So make sure that you go to someone who is really well-versed with the treatment, 
what uh, different treatment modalities for ADHD, um, not just medication, but other things, and also is well versed in medications for ADHD. And then find an ADHD coach. One of the reasons I decided to get coach training is because I really feel that if you are on medication and you also have an ADHD coach, you probably have the best of both worlds. ADHD coaching is really um, superb. I, I have had my own coach uh, in, in the past as well, too. And um, some of the advantages of ADHD coaching is that there's a person there that's an accountability person, uh, someone who's in your corner or should be in your corner that um, you, you can relate to. It's a real supportive environment for continued success and you can develop your own personal plan for success and develop strategies, as well as developing new skills that you may need to manage your impulsivity, distractibility, improve time management, and, and self-regulation skills that you may be lacking. You can improve social skills, communication, listening skills. You can, um, it, coaching can help you to set boundaries learn to manage conflicts in your life. Um, you can find support for self-esteem issues such as guilt, shame, poor self-image that often go along with having ADHD. Uh, you can also learn your unique strengths and talents that you may not be aware of, and as well as reducing stress in your life. And one of the most important things that coaching can do for you is provide education. What, what is ADHD? How does it affect the brain? And, and topics like that that can be very helpful. So um, finding an ADHD coach may be uh, really worthwhile for your success as a dad with ADHD as well. There's sources of support like ADA, CHAD, uh, uh, ADD Connect, uh, men's support groups, family counseling, parenting classes. You know, if there's not a support group in your town, start one. Um, there's informational books, webinars, conferences you can go to. And, and anymore, there's even webinars where you don't even have to leave home. So there's hardly any cost at all. Uh, in the comfort of your home, you can attend an online uh, class or attend a webinar. Now, there are issues, there are comorbid conditions that can go with ADHD that can very much affect your uh, ability to parent. And these may be mood disorders, poor self-esteem, substance abuse, anger, chronic anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive uh, behaviors. And this, this is not a complete list. Um, this is only a few of the things for, mit, for which you may need an additional therapist. And exercise proper nutrition. I have friends with ADHD who exercise all the time, and that's how they focus. When I exercise after work, when I come home and I exercise um, and put in a, a, a really good 15, 30-minute exercise session in, I can focus better in the evening. It helps me a lot. So I really highly recommend that. So watch for traits. We're still on what things that you can do to help yourself. That's the number one thing that you can do. It's, it's almost like being in an airplane when they, they say, you know, you need to put your own oxygen mask on first and then assist your child. That's exactly what you need to do if you have ADHD. You need to help yourself first and find out what things need work. And there were a lot of things that I found that I needed to work on. And as I uh, got further into the ADHD world, I learned more strategies. I learned how to be a better parent. And it was very helpful. And I, and I could see my relationship with my kids improving along the way. So for a trait that can harm your relationship, frustration and anger. You know, people with ADHD, they, they tend to feel things more intensely when something pushes their button. They don't just feel things, they really feel things. And they'll express it too. And, you know, we know that there are emotional components to ADHD that often interfere with relationships. You know, where are you most vulnerable? Uh, think about that. You know, for me uh, and my wife will tell you this, too. We know that late at night is my worst time. 
We just don't talk about things late at night. And if something comes up late at night, she'll remind me that it's late at night and we pro probably should table it till morning. And there is an amazing difference between me late at night and early in the morning. I can look at things more um, objectively. I can, I'm calmer. Uh, I, things don't look like um, there's, they're all hopeless and uh, tragic and things look a lot better for me in the morning. So there may be times a day that work better for you to discuss things too. And certainly don't lash out during moments, ADHD moments. Um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Poor self-esteem, self-limiting beliefs can, and these things can come early in your life uh, for feedback from parents, teachers, friends. And, and you may have this saboteur that keeps telling you things um, and, and watch for self-limiting talk, um, certain habits of speech, like I'm so stupid, what could I expect out of me? Uh, you know, when, when other people's thoughts that, of, that you have heard growing up and even into adulthood become your own, they don't often serve us well. And feelings of shame, guilt, and worthlessness can really tragically interfere with your ability to parent. Poor communication, social skills, listening skills. Those of us with ADHD don't always tend to be the best listener. Um, we're listening to different channels in our brain, maybe a hundred channels, but we're not necessarily listening to the person who's speaking to us. Poor time management and prioritization can really interfere greatly with the quality time that you can have with your children. And then a lack of consistency in parenting or discipline can lead to that inconsistency can lead to a lack of trust or that children don't have that stability that they need, that they, they need to come from you. Other possible challenges, just overreacting to your child's negative behaviors. Particularly in my case, um, both of my children have ADHD and sometimes they would act out in ways that were overwhelming for me. I'd come home from a busy day at work and the last thing I wanted was chaos, but that's what I had a lot of time. And so I would find that I would be uh, overreacting to them or taking it out on them when I, sh I shouldn't. Um, overwhelmed with homework issues. Having kids with ADHD, um, the homework issues were always uh, a hassle. And my wife was able to be more patient than I was with homework issues. I tend to do better with people that just are listening and um, are taking things in, um, are really into the homework, uh, really want to do well. And, uh, you know, my kids would be talking about things that weren't even related. And, and it was very, very um, difficult for me. I did improve with time. Um, over the last year, my daughter needed help with chemistry, and I was able to help her consistently. There were a few times that she got sidetracked, that I got a little bit irritated, but for the most part, I could see the improvement in myself from when she was very little. Setting appropriate boundaries, particularly when you don't have appropriate boundaries yourself, can be a problem, and teaching your children boundaries. Marital problems is a, is a biggie. If you're, uh, uh, you know, if you are having marital problems, if your marriage is not solid and um, your children can pick that up very easily, they know that you're upset or upset with each other, even if you're not even in the same room. When you show up in the room, they can sense that something is wrong. And um, we know, and it's a topic of, of, of another talk, but we know that marital problems can arise when um, people, one or both spouses, have ADHD. My wife happens to be non-ADHD, and I'm ADHD, so we know some of the challenges that there are of being a couple where one person has ADHD. So those are things uh, that you really need to work out. The stronger your marriage is, the better off your kids are going to be, whether they have ADHD 
or not, and the better parents you're going to be able to be for them. Job failure and loss, that's a big one because we know with ADHD that um, there's a lot of like school failure. So, um, you know, you may not have prepared well or you may not have even finished school. Um, and so maybe uh, your job might not be as high paying as if you had had X amount of education. And it does have an effect on family relationships. Job loss, either from being fired. Um, people with ADHD can go through multiple jobs. I think the record was 125 jobs in one year, somebody told me. That's outrageous. Um, and But job loss from being bored or being fired. Um, but it does affect family relationships. When you're struggling with financial issues, um, it's difficult to be a parent. And um, I, I've been there at times, too, so I know what that's like. Long-term incarceration. Unfortunately, we, we have families in our practice where one parent is incarcerated, and it can be for a lengthy amount of time. So in these cases, the dad may not even be present uh, to be the dad that they should. And, you know, there's ways of getting around it. It's, it's very unfortunate. Um, sometimes if you have a job where you work long hours away from home or you're on the road for a few weeks at a time, you can leave little notes at home for the kids. You can write letters that you can make phone calls. You know, there's ways you can get around it. But that that time, whatever it, it is, should be quality time. Other possible issues, procrastination, lack of goal setting, lack of planning and organization, lack of ability to keep promises. That, that's a real big one, and we'll get to that in a little bit. And lack of follow through. You know, if you have a hard time following through with things in your life to begin with, if you just are very disorganized and you procrastinate, um, you know, it's, it's hard to promise things to the kids and follow through with them that they can trust you and, and know that you'll meet up with expectations for them. And so all of those are possible issues that can get in the way of, of parenting. Now, I want to talk just for a second about the relationship with your own dad, because this is very, very important. And I think we overlook this sometimes. Perhaps your own dad had ADHD. Even if he didn't, what are the, uh, what are the memories that you have of your relationship with your own dad? Do you have positive or negative memories of your relationship with him? Because your relationship with your own dad may greatly affect how you react to your own children, especially during those ADHD-charged moments. And um, you, may, you may respond to things the way your dad did. Um, I'm, I'm happy to say that my relationship today as an adult with my dad is very, very good. We are the closest that we have ever been um, in, in my life. I, I really enjoy my relationship with my dad today. But, you know, we weren't always this close. And, and I, I look back and I think, wow, you know, I must have been pretty difficult to parent um, because my dad didn't know that I had ADHD. Neither of my parents knew I had ADHD and, and I didn't know I had ADHD. And so there were times that, wow, it must have been really, really difficult um, to raise me. And I look back now and, you know, I think they did a pretty good job, you know, in spite of uh, problems that, that I, I may have had. Now, I want to talk for a, a minute or two about anger. Um, you know, I, I know all too well about anger. Um, and, and anger is something that we really should spend a whole hour on in another talk. It destroys relationships. It impedes your ability to be happy. It sends marriages out the door. It just sends family relationships way off course. It compromises our social skills and interferes with healthy relationships. And it actually can lead to non-productivity while you're being angry. And it's not just the moments that you're angry. It's the aftermath of the anger and that you're not productive. Everybody is emotionally exhausted, including yourself. And it may lead to poor self-esteem that also hinders relationships. 
as well as causing health problems. Uh, you can get a heart attack and it can lead to increased stress and worry for your family. You need to know that it may also be a symptom of other psychiatric disorders besides ADHD, such as bipolar disorder, intermittent explosive disorder, uh, major depression, panic disorder, generalized anxiety, and other things that may be lookalikes. So be aware of warnings and triggers, take deep breaths, exercise regularly, get a lot of sleep, give yourself breaks. Music is great for me. Learn to act but not react. Think before you speak. And be aware that frustration and overwhelm can be problems for people with ADHD. Accept yourself as being human. Don't try to win arguments and seek help from a counselor or coach, particularly if you have pathologic anger, such as where you are lashing out, becoming physical or verbal abusive. That is really, really bad news, and you need to find uh, um, more help if those are uh, warning signs that you have. And so you can ask yourself, what am I angry about? Focus on the present issue. Choose your battles. Forgive and forget. And know when you should let things go. And use solutions-based language when things start to get tense. And learn to use humor. Humor is great and can turn that anger around at times. And then feelings of shame and guilt. Um, you need to learn to forgive yourself and forgive others. When you're guilty, you know, it's about things that you have felt you have done wrong. Or maybe that people have, have told you that you should be guilty about. And shame is a perception of oneself as a failure and feeling unacceptable to others. Let go of toxic people in your life. Anyone that you feel is negative or does not accept you as a person, let go of that person. And let go of things that it's all my fault or those kinds of feeling and shame from childhood. Make new parents and a new family of supportive friends. Very important. And write down uh, positive experiences where you are on a mountain, where you have made a difference in your life and in other people's lives when you have been successful. And, and talk, talk to yourself, how did it feel? And then replace negative self-talk with things that empower you. So when you think about you know, negative self-talk, think about, is the thought really true? How do I know it's true? What is the evidence? Is this thought really serving me well? And who would I be if I didn't have these thoughts? And am I willing to release these thoughts? Very important. And then take caring of, taking care of yourself first. Learn to set boundaries. Reclaim authority over your life. Learn to love yourself fully and unapologetically. And never give up on achieving your full potential. Decide to embrace the fact that you are okay. That having ADHD, you are not flawed. Your brain is just wired differently. ADHD should never define you as a person. So that's the first thing. Take care of yourself. Number two, know that you are significant and make a difference in your child's life. You are significant. When I have had children in my uh, uh, pre medical practice that have been abused by their, their parents, they still want that acceptance and love from their parents. You do make a difference. You are important to that child. Express the high value you have on your child. Praise your child often. Schedule meaningful time. Teach your child self-help skills that you needed to learn to overcome your challenges. Be a positive role model. Demonstrate good listening skills. And show your child how to work together to solve problems. Kids need to know that they are significant, capable, unconditionally loved and accepted, respected, able to make effective, responsible decisions, able to trust you at all times, able to depend on you and talk to you about anything. They need that. They want that. And never impulsively cast shame and guilt on your child. Remember what it felt like for you. Your parent discipline should uh, focus on specific behaviors, not the child's self. And then if your child has ADHD, he may exhibit impulsive behaviors, not a sign of defiance, Never show public humiliation to your child, no matter how you were treated uh, by your parents or other people. And be aware that your child cannot fill holes inside of you that you would like to have filled growing up. And they cannot fill the holes that maybe were there from your parents. 
your child can never be perfect. Number three, probably the most important, give your child unconditional love. Because I did, I had struggled in school when I was in high school. School was very, very important to me. I struggled greatly. I had to work 10 times harder to get the same grade. So I was out to prove to the world that I could make just as good a grade as everybody else. I could do what they could do. I could get into just as good a college. So when we had children, I expected the same thing of them. Even though I knew that ADHD kids struggled with school, I still expected the same thing of them. And early on, if they didn't make a grade, I would belittle them. And it wasn't good. And they were more like students, like subjects, not, not real people. That changed. And I attribute the fact that my kids do better today because I changed. I think they would have ended up hating school if I had uh, stayed the same. Um, and this is the kind of love that's not because of what your child does, but because of who your child is. Think of love as an action, not a feeling. You need to love yourself unconditionally, too. And learn to forgive and forget. And then think about what you can do to love your child today. Number four is to become an active listener. Always listen first without interrupting. And listen with the intention of building a stronger relationship. Use your listening skills to help your child solve problems. Use problem-solving phases. And pause in the moment when your child is talking and mirror back what your child just said. Very important that they know that you are listening to them. If you want your child to listen to you, you must listen to him or her first. And use uh, coaching questions, who or what rather than why, that puts people on the defensive. Use open-ended questions are best because you'll learn a lot more about your child and they will open up more with those kinds of questions. Stop whatever you're doing. Please no cell phones, don't check your emails, look directly at your child. Pay attention to your child's nonverbal language and use the acronym WAIT. Why am I talking? Duct tape your mouth as you listen. Acknowledge your child and accept your child's feelings, even if they're uncomfortable. Uh, and trust that your child is naturally creative, resourceful, and whole. And the last one, number five, that helped me is always keep your promises. Kids spell love, T-I-M-E, so spend that time with them. Don't just show up, put your kids first, and before anything, other priorities, be there for them. Um, when you make a commitment to spend time with your child, be on time and give that child full attention and always think before you promise. Particularly with ADHD kids, I had to learn the hard way that maybe is interpreted as yes. So it's better for you to say no if you're not sure that you can follow through and show your child that you are dependable. And lastly, I want you to know that uh, that no matter what you have, if it's ADHD, if it's some other disability or wh whatever label you put on yourself, whatever you think is a problem that may be problematic, it is not. Your child, your child needs you. Your children need you. I don't care what shape you're in. Lead the way, dads. Uh, you, you stand the best chance of being the best dad ever. And no matter what has happened in the past, do not ever give up. It is never the end. There is still hope. Even if your child is an adult, there is hope that you can establish a great relationship with that child. And I'm going to stop here because uh, I want to leave time for questions. Thank you. That's so um, inspirational. It really, it really is. Um, there's a lot of uh, great um, advice there, and I think some of the questions that we have uh, revolve around how to make those things happen. So, for example, um, a good question here from Josh, who says, my biggest problem is being present for my kids. I'm constantly distracted by work, my to-do list, my phone, um, but the problem persists even when I put my phone down. Um, and he just says in parentheses, I am on meds. I do see a therapist, but I still still problem. I have a problem just being in the moment with my children. Do you have any suggestions or, or tips for Josh? He seems like he's making progress but struggling still, which I'm sure is the case for all of us ADHD parents. Sure. And 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 with me, um, I have I have some 
regrets along that way. So I understand completely where you're coming from. I, I do remember um, I probably made more mistakes with our first child than our second. Um, I remember um, with our first child, he would say, Dad, I want to spend this time with you. Uh, would you please look at this uh, that I'm project I'm doing? And I would constantly, and it was ADHD. Uh, a lot of it was um, uh, constantly saying, well, I'll, I'll be there in a minute. I'll be there in a minute. I just want to finish something. There was something that was always more important or something I just wanted to finish or look at. But you know what it really happened? A lot of times, I not only would be looking at one thing, on the way to the living room to spend time with my son, I'd see something else, and I'd pick that up and start looking. And as time went on, he became less um, um, trusting. And, and I noted as time went on, um, he wouldn't depend on me anymore. And, and at one point, it got less and less and less where he would ask me to do things with him. And my, my biggest advice, and, and now he's an adult, I'm an adult, and I'm trying to rebuild a lot of that. You know, you don't want to have to rebuild it later if, if you can avoid it. Um, we, we know our brains, and even on medication, as you say, our brains are what they are. We're wired differently, and it's so easy to get distracted. Um, you just have to, to, um, to force yourself. <laughs> you know, you have to put everything down, get rid of the phone, get rid of this, get rid of that, and just say to yourself, during this time, I am going to shut out everything else and spend time with that child. And part of it is, is um, convincing yourself that I am going to whatever he is interested in. And there were things that my son was interested in that I wasn't interested in at all. But it was still important that I spend that time with him and, and relate to what he is interested in, regardless if I'm... And, you, and with ADHD, the less interest you have in it, it's even harder. It's even harder to focus on that. So it was really a matter of me, um, um, you know, making a, um, a vow to myself that this is what I'm going to do. I, 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 I have to do this. And, and, and in all fairness, I struggled with it, too, um, o- over the course of time. And even with our second child, there were times I was better than other times. But I realized, unfortunately, the hard way, I learned the hard way, that by not giving my child that attention, it almost extinguishes over time the amount of time that that child wants to spend with you. Because after a while, they don't trust you anymore. And so, yeah. yeah. So, go. yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. um, A couple of questions here about meditation, mindfulness. Are there strategies that you'd recommend to help? people, dads, moms, whomever, sort of stop and <laughs> sort of say, wait, I need to, you know, pay attention now. Are there any tips or, but I think that that's really hard. You've just, we've just put our finger on something that's really one of the hardest elements of, for ADHD parents. Um, well, I think along those lines, I, yeah. I think that, you know, any of those are modalities that, that, you know, I, I think, uh, um, you know, um, we don't have time to talk about it in completeness, but in general, with those kinds of things, just getting away is getting yourself out of the way. There are times when I think you just need to get yourself out of the way. There are times that you just shouldn't be there. You need mm-hmm. to get away, think, take a walk, exercise, listen to music, you know, um, uh, close your eyes, think of a beautiful scene. But you need to get away, and I think that you know takes some training. Your coach can help you with right. that, and and things like that. But there were times that I remember that I just pounced on a situation when my kids were acting up, and I didn't even know the whole story, and I ended up saying something that I shouldn't have, and I didn't even know the whole situation. And if I would have gotten myself out of the way and would have learned more about the situation and would have calmed down it wouldn't have escalated the way it did. Uh-huh. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, 
Ooh, there's some really powerful questions here, I have to tell you. Um, uh, here's one from Amy. Um, my husband does nothing that he's not interested in. We all identify with that trait in ADHDers, right? But the result is that he spends much more time with my son than with my daughter. Um, that sounds like a tough one. And uh, she says that she schedules, she tries to schedule things for her husband and her daughter to do together. But I wondered if you had any comments on that, um, that, 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 you know, ADHD tendency to focus on the things that are interesting to us. Well, um, the higher the interest, the higher the focus. Right. And that's just the reality of, of, of ADHD. And to do things on demand like uh, to do something that's out of our comfort zone mm -hmm. it is difficult. But we know that daughters need their dads equally and that, um, that there are problems of daughters whose dads are not in their life. And so that's, that time is really important. The thing that I would recommend is find out, you know, what that your daughter is interested in and right, right. whatever it is, it just, Make yourself sit and listen. And one thing that you can do to help yourself is to ask your daughter questions about the things she's interested in. You'll be amazed how much you will learn. And there may be something that she says that, that's actually interesting. I had a great experience. I, um, my wife wasn't able to go one time. We took, I took my daughter to visit colleges, uh, one college that she visited, and it was just one-on-one -on -one time where she and I in the car, and it was the gr it was a great time. You and I'll get that time very often. That was awesome time for her and I one-on-one. -on -one. So yeah. those are wonderful times. Um, take okay. advantage of them. Right. Um, your, your mention of... Um, uh, repairing damage that was done through, you know, um, anger or, or whatever, it, it really struck a chord with the people listening in. Um, a number of people have asked if you have any advice for how to rebuild a relationship. And I think your, your positive suggestion that it's always possible to, to rebuild a relationship meant a lot to people. Any, any, specific advice on how to do that? I mean, I think that many people have regrets, as you mentioned, about mm -hmm. behavior that they may have had as a parent um, or anger. Um, well, nobody's going to be a perfect parent, but one way that you could start is if you really want to reconnect with that child, and, and maybe that child isn't ready to reconnect, but so you kind of maybe have to break it in slowly. But one of the things that you can do is when you get together with that child, talk about them. Just, just focus on that child because most people are interested in themselves. And if you focus on that child, you might be able to get them to open up. And maybe you might have to do that a few times. Find something that's interesting to them. I mean, they may not trust you at first, but over time that trust can come back. The one thing you don't want to do if the reason why your relationship was estranged is because you were belittling or critical or, you know, things like that, the last thing you want to do is criticize. You want right. to get yourself out of the way and, and completely look to that child and talk to them about what they're interested in. That's great advice. Uh, as I think your point about stop talking so much is something we all need to hear, right? Listen more and talk less. Um, yeah, that's, that's, um, that makes a huge amount of sense. Um, there are two interesting posts here that I want to bring up and I wonder, they don't, well, well, the people who posted them don't mention shame. I wonder if it isn't, doesn't involve shame. One person is in his fifties and he's been recently diagnosed with ADHD. He's extremely hesitant to mention it to his children. He wants to mention it, but he's just very, um, concerned about, how to do that. And I'm guessing that there might be some shame or, or issues there. And similarly, there's a mom online whose husband does not want their ADHD child to know that he himself, the father, has ADHD. He feels that that's not something that should be told to the child. Um, so the, both, in both those cases, you know, there's concern about um, 
acknowledging ADHD, one for an adult with adult children and one for a, a, a father of younger children. What's your, what are your thoughts on that? I, I, I'm guessing it's shame related. I, I, I can't know, but. Um, it, you know, I don't know the person, right. but it might have been the way ADHD was handled right. by that person growing up. Um, I, I, I am not ashamed of having ADHD. I think there are challenges of ADHD, but there's some really wonderful traits of ADHD. And we can mm-hmm. go on and on and on about famous right. people with ADHD who have done amazing, marvelous things because they can think out of the box. I don't mm-hmm. feel like ADHD is something that you uh, need to be ashamed of, um, but I know it, it happens. Uh, I remember a lady walking out of my office with her coat over her head because she didn't want anyone to right. see that she came into an ADD clinic. Yeah, in the early How years of attitude, we used to have people request that it be mailed in a brown envelope so no one so it wouldn't be seen in the post office. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> I know. So yeah. <laughs> Um, but, but, you know, so it may have been that uh, that person was belittled by teachers and family members and, and either, even peers. But, you know, one, one thing that a child, um, I think a child could actually benefit from knowing that you have ADHD and how you overcome certain challenges in your life, you could actually be a help to that child. And, and you know, and if your child looks up to you, and they see you as a real father figure and a leader, they are able to see that, you know, you can have ADHD, but you also can have great leadership qualities. Mm -hmm. Um, You can be together and and you can make a difference in this world. So there's a lot of good that could come out of that. And and so um, it, it may actually be hindering some opportunities to connect with that child and teach them things that you had to learn. Right. Right. But it's a tough, it's tough. I mean, I, I think you're right, you know, growing up and feeling not having your ADHD knowledge and then something, you know, it, coming to share it with your child is, can be a painful, painful one. You're um, not defective or dirty or on, right. you know, That's yeah. the key, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Being, feeling okay about what you're telling with your child. A um, couple of interesting questions about discipline slash consequences. One person says, I dole out unrealistically light consequences, leaving my wife in the bad guy role. And another person similarly says, I offer too many um, incentives and I'm too generous. I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm excessive. So there's a sense that this that people posting are having a hard time balancing, um, not being extreme in either on either the harsh side or the not harsh side of working with their kids. Do you have any, any, I mean, we could, as you know, talk about discipline and consequences forever. It's a huge topic in, in our, with our people, with our attitude readers, but do you have any thoughts on those particular comments? Well, I think that, you know, whatever discipline you have has to be, you know, appropriate for the condition. I, I have a lot of regrets, actually, in terms of discipline. Um, my, I got spanked a lot when I grew up. And um, mm. by, you know, my parents, and, and, and I, I found that spanking is counterproductive with ADHD. And mm-hmm. the fact that our children had ADHD, it actually um, escalates a problem. And, you know, whether it just, you know, gets into their limbic system and it makes things worse, but it really wasn't the appropriate way to go about it for our children. And um, I, I almost, you know, it's not that I'm against spanking, but I wish I, we hadn't had re- you know, reverted to that technique um, right. at this point and knowing my kids now. But, you know, I, I think that, that you have to make sure that you are in control um, as far as disciplining and make sure that it fits whatever, you know, the, the crime, so to speak, is. And the consistency between um, the parents is really important that there is consistency. It, it creates a little bit of an instability for children when one parent does things one way and another parent does things another way. And, and we, we find that's been a real problem when we have uh, blended families or uh, divorce mm-hmm. situations where a kid spends part time at one home and then another part of the time in another home it it becomes 
problematic because when I talk to both sets of parents, they do things differently. And that's right. really now, There are difficult. a couple of those examples on the webinar. People have said, you know, it's just really difficult being, being a divorced parent met with part-time custody. So all the problems that we were talking about are just exacerbated in that case. Exactly. Right? Yeah. 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 So try to be consistent. I know it's not easy. <laughs> well, that's a very um, specific question of a couple of people here. They say that that's one of the toughest things is consistency. And, you know, ha having ADHD as a parent, um, knowing that consistency is important um, and just really finding it a tough, a, a very tough. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on um, consistency <laughs> and schedules, um, structure. Well, you know, if it's if the case of divorce situation, um, the more that you can work together with the other parent, the better off the child is. They, the, I, I just know that the families that work together, no matter what the situation, uh, and they work together, and there's not this hostility. Maybe you can't live together, but for the sake of the child to be consistent, it it really works. I, I um, When I was a chat coordinator, um, there was a couple that came to our meetings and I thought they were married all this time. And it turned out they were divorced, but they were coming for the sake of their, their children with ADHD. Wow. And they got along so well that I, th I always thought they were married. They just knew that um, maybe they weren't right for each other, but they were certainly going to make it right for their children. Right. Great. That's great. Um couple of questions on oppositional behavior, which I, you know, we know that oppositional behavior is pretty common among, with kids with ADHD. And what the fathers who were on the webinar are saying is that that behavior, disrespectful, um, rude anger from the child just is very difficult for them, sets them, sets off their anger response and their um any 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 um, guidance on dealing with oppositional and disrespectful behavior? Sure. Um, in a one, one of the things <laughs> yeah. that that helped me was to talk to my wife because mm -hmm. she's not ADHD and and I understand perfectly when there's chaos, there's oppositional behavior. The thing is with my ADHD, it just it's there's a trigger in me. You know, right. I, I like calm, even though we often likes a lot of stimulation. I still cherish that calm and particularly after a hard day and and I come home and there's chaos or when my my children are acting out it is very difficult so a lot of times I would consult with my wife and again um, I, I hate to beat this to death but the thing that really helped me was to get away when I could disconnect and get away I could see things in a different light and sometimes I would get away and then I would talk to my wife first about her side and what she's seeing. And then I went back to our child and would talk. And um, the few times that I did that, it worked. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Here's someone. Adam says, you know, my daughter has ADHD, as I do. Often I see behavior and I understand that it's happening because of ADHD, but my wife, who does not have ADHD, doesn't always recognize that ADHD is, is the cause. How do I help her understand what's happening? So it's a little bit the inverse of what you're saying, um, um, where, you know, the difficulty of getting parent, both parents on the same page. Um, yeah, if, if you don't have ADHD, oftentimes... It's difficult to understand the issues, um, right? And that's where um, that's where increase, increase education. That's where resources like Attitude and Chad and Ada are really good resources where you can get a lot of information uh, on ADHD. Because I, I it, it amazes me to this day how little some people know about ADHD. It's really true. With all the research that's been out there, and, and th there's still some ignorance, but um, these kids aren't necessarily um, acting out out of defiance. And a lot of times it's difficult to distinguish that fine line between what's defiance and what's impulsivity. It, it right. is difficult sometimes. Or anxiety, or anxiety sometimes. You know, we had a great presentation yep. um, about... Uh, 
the, the fear that so many kids have that they can't perform um, because of ADHD or LD and how it manifests itself as, as, as oppositional or aggressive behavior, but it's actually underlying anxiety. Um, that is a great, and that's a topic of another discussion, but we yeah. often, as a uh, physician, we often miss underlying anxiety in right. kids and depression with kids with ADHD right. that and, can be at the yeah. source of a lot of anger. And feel that their behavior is somehow uh, something that we need to clamp down on rather than, I mean, I know it's easier said than done, but then we need to get understanding of what's going on. Um, this has just been a great presentation. I can't thank you enough. Uh, one last question. Um, you know, I think your recommendation for education and for um, coaching is is right on target. And maybe you could just recap um, some of the ways that people can find a coach or a, a knowledgeable doctor. That is a question that we hear over and over again. Um, people just have a really tough time getting the, the help that they need. Um, mm -hmm. So any comments you might want to make there? And I can add a few as well. One um, one reference that comes to mind immediately is attitude. Um, <laughs> Thank they you. Have great web listings of all sorts of coaches and um, clinicians uh, in in the field. And um, Chad is another resource. Ada has a professional listing directory, and so those are and uh, maybe ACO has. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's they a, have. That's a coach organization. Everyone ACO. The, um, it's a great organization of ADHD coaches, right? It's a good exactly, one. Exactly, yeah. yeah. But make sure if you have ADHD and you find a coach that they are versed in ADHD um, and they really do have a real understanding of what, you know, how people's brains are with ADHD, it makes a huge difference um, yeah. when, you, when you find a coach or a clinician. Absolutely. Yeah, so just to recap, everybody, there is a, a directory on the CHAD site. CHAD is the National Attention Deficit Disorder Advocacy Organization. I can't recommend it highly enough, along with ADDA, ADDA, which is an, uh, an advocacy organization for adults with attention deficit disorder. Um, Attitude has a directory. It's directory.attitudemag.com. Um, and you know, talk to people, go on, go on the ADD Connect website, on our, our web, community website, and connect with other people and get recommendations from, the, from those people. Because no question that having an experienced person to work with makes a huge difference. Um, Dr. Dixon, thank you again. Great presentation. We really appreciate your time and hope you'll come back again. Uh, I want to quote one person here who says, this is the, one of the best presentations I have ever heard on the subject of parenting and being an ADHD parent. So that was from Ben. <laughs> Thanks so much. Goodbye, everybody. For more Attitude podcast and information on living well with attention deficit, visit attitudemag.com. That's A-D-D-I-T-U-D-E-M-A-G dot com.